So after placing the girders, we're now ready to go to place our joists. The joists actually are the sub-members that provide support for the daking. And uh, for the joists we're going to place in this project, so I have a couple of different sizes as well as different layout patterns. One of the most important things for the uh, placing the joists is actually when it use the beam system. So we're going to introduce the concepts of beam system and how actually to implement them uh, in the modeling process. So, most important thing regarding the joist bearing, and we're going to look at it specifically at the grid line A, B, and C, and between the unit A and unit B and unit C. Okay, so pay attention to the elevation change in terms of joist bearing um, is really essential to the process of modeling the joists. So let's take a look at this little portion here. We use the section between grid line B and A and two and three as our example. So in order to place the joists here, what we're going to do is we're going to use the beam system and uh, place this whole bay of joists at one time. Okay, so let's take a look at the process and go back to this model. Let's go to our fixed team, uh, 15, 6 elevation because that's the middle section for the joist bearing at a grid line B, which is great because you can either um, place the joists for the between the grid line A and B or between B and C, which is really the middle section of the joist bearing. Now, the example we're actually going to showcase is actually this little area between B, A, and 2 and 3. So let's take a look at our plan grid detail here and we are placing 22K7 series with layout pattern with 6 foot on center unless noted otherwise. Okay, so this is a note you have to pay attention to. Now, before we place this joist, the actually the beam system, it's very actually very important for you to understand that when you actually create a beam system, it is essential for you to have a stricter support on the four edges of the beam system. In this case, we already have the girders placed, but we do not have the joists being placed at all. Uh, the two options for you to do so, one is actually go ahead and place the beam system first, then place the joists, or you can actually place the um, parameter joists first and then play the beam system. So we're going to demonstrate in you know, both cases and you will choose which one you um, prefer. So let's go ahead and place on the beam system uh, without support and without providing the um, parameter support in this case. Okay, so go ahead and go to the Revit model and let's go to the structural tab and choose a BIM system. Okay, in this case we'll have to, what you have to specify include the layout patterns which is 6 foot which is exactly the one we need um, and then the BIM tab has to be specified as 22K7. Okay, and the justification basically says if I want to place the beam system, okay, what will be my original starting point? So in this case, we actually want to choose the beginning of the beam system as the the uh, starting point. And the last thing you have to specify really is your um, um, 3D uh, snapping, uh, because in this case we have a much you know we have a much a higher elevation and on grid line A in terms of joist bearing compared with B. So that's why the whole beam system is going to be sloped from A to B. In that case, we are actually dealing with a 3D condition. So let's actually let's check the 3D snapping here. Now, in order to define the boundary of the beam system, we have a couple of different ways. You can draw the boundary and you can also pick support. In our case, we can choose pick support because we already have Okay, the front support, the back support. What we do not have is the side support in this case. So what you're going to do is you're going to actually draw the support between those two sides. Okay. Now, before we finish up, one of the most important things regarding the um, beam system is trying to define the um, beam direction, which means um, in which direction those joints actually aligned. In our case, if you look at the joint itself. It tell you pretty obviously the joist is going to be lined up vertically. So in our model, however, at this moment, our beam direction is aligned horizontally. This little line here with the two short lines on, on each side is actually is the beam direction uh, symbol. So we have to change the beam direction by going to the beam direction definition and define the direction manually. In our case, you can either draw this line as the beam direction line or you actually can use uh, existing line uh, as a guidance. So in my case, I would just 
choose the pick line tool and pick this line up, and that will become a new BIM direction. Okay, so with all those being done, we're good to go to complete the BIM system. Okay, as you see here, this is a BIM system because, as you see, it's not individually um, placed the joists only, but also they form a logical relationship that becomes one of the system here. Okay, so if you hit Escape key uh, to quit the command and let's go to 3D view, examine what has been placed. As you see here, okay, the whole BIM system consists of those four joists. The distance between each one of them is supposed to be six feet. Okay, but now the question becomes why we do not have the joists placed on the edge of the BIM system? Well, that is actually uh, intentionally done by Revit. So imagine, okay, imagine we have this BIM system here, and we have another BIM system on this side, and if you do place the joists on the edge of the BIM system, that would end up placing two joists in the same place. So that's why in Revit they do not automatically place the joists at the edge of the BIM system. Okay? So this is one of the methodology we use, okay, and besides pay attention to the support condition here, the um you will see that the joist actually sits right on top of the um, front girder as well as the back girder has a perfect slope there. So that's why uh, you know that's what does the uh, 3D snapping uh, was doing okay so that definitely needs to call, uh, catch your attention so let's take a look at our uh, at our um, plan view again okay in this case because we do not have the age doors place we have to manually place them so in this case you can to uh, you can do tif uh, do it in two different ways first you can actually draw the doors just like you did for the girders okay but at the same time you can also use the existing joists and copy it over because this joist already have a slope have already considered slope at the front it's actually taller and the back is actually a bit lower so we can use this uh, copy tool right here and uh, you can copy it multiple times because you need um, a joist on both sides, this side as well as this side. So you can actually check multiple allow you, which will allow you to place copy and paste two, um, you know, two multiple places. So I will use this as my starting point for my copying because when you actually copy something, you have to specify a starting point as well as an end point. Okay, so I click on this. And I move my mouse and I slap right into the middle of the column. So that's one copy. And let's copy again to this side, which will be right here. Okay. So that will actually finish, okay, the BIM system. And now if you're examining, okay, it looks like it's perfectly lined up and it's complete BIM system. Now, I mentioned you can draw a BIM system this way without placing the age joists first, but placing the BIM system first. You can also do the opposite, the other way around, which means you're going to place the age joists, which is provide all the supports on four sides of this area, and then place in the BIM system. So try to see how that works. And also, uh, there's a different condition here. If you notice, this area between grid line two, uh, 3 and 4 and A and B, the system has a liberal variation here. First thing is the pattern is different. Instead of like a six foot in between on center, you have five eighth and a, a half inch on center. Second is this beam system does not cover the whole area. Instead, the individual joists, which is five foot nine inches away from the edge uh, joists here. So in that case, we actually have to place this joist first, and then use the beam system to place the whole system here. So slightly different, but it's a perfect example for us to showcase the other way of placing beam system. So in this case, go back to the model. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna still use this copy, you know, um, function here. Copy this, and actually move. Okay, copy here and click there as a starting point and copy place right here okay so that will actually create a joist between this column and that column so then what you can do is I'm gonna copy this joist we just placed okay 
and in this case, I just need one joist, and I want to copy this joist so that it is five foot nine inches away from this one. So you can click anywhere in the blank space and move your mouse towards the direction you want where you want to place the joist, and hit uh, on your keyboard and type five nine, which will be five foot nine inches. The spacebar tells you anything after the spacebar will be inches. Hit enter. So that will become the extra joist you need to place. Now, in our case, okay, our beam system is ready to be placed, okay, and uh, this beam system will be the system right here, okay. So we're using 22k7, still the same, but the distance on center is different now, okay. So let's go back and see how this beam system is going to be different with all the four sides have already got a support. So let's go ahead and go to beam system again. So don't forget to change your fixed spacing, fixing uh, fixed spacing to be five foot eight and a half inch. Okay, and uh, the beam type still is 22k series, uh, k7 series, and it's going to be 3D snapping again. And now you'll find out. Okay, we'll have something called automatic beam system becoming available. Okay, this is excellent because it's so much easier to use the automatic beam system because at this moment for this area you have all four sides already have a structural support. So all you have to do is okay uh, specify a line that you want to line up with your bearing direction. In this case I want to line my doors vertically so my mouse is going to click on the vertical condition and make sure that your green dash lines which will give you a sketch about where the doors going to be uh, is falling on your on the side you want to be. So in this case my mouse will be slightly on the right side of that vertical joist here. So you can also tag on placement which means it will actually provide a tagging for this beam system you're going to place and uh, once you have all that figured out and uh, go ahead and click left click only once. So with that beam done you have already placed a beam system with a tag on it, so which is really easy and nice. Okay, you can also add manually add this um, um, the beam system symbol for this beam system created here as well by going to annotate and go all the way to your right hand and you'll find out this beam symbol right there. Okay, beam system symbol. So you can click on that beam system and place it somewhere. Okay. All right. So that showcase two different ways of placing a beam system, and uh, really it's up to you how would you like to place the beam system. And sometimes it's easier to place the boundary joists first, then place the beam system. Sometimes it's actually easier for you to place the beam system first, then place the boundary joists. It's really up. Uh, it's up to you, and also it's up to how the project will be actually designed. So that concludes our video on structural framing with the joists using BIM system. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the architectural modeling part.